here we are in the age of cylinder molded enlightenment and the associated fallout of the biaxial mold sloppy workmanship non-developable plat non-developable plywood species and most likely badly sealed vacuum bags probably sucked down with a shop vac to a half atmosphere vacuum if i'm not mistaken there was a video manual that <clears throat> that implied doing just that but past is past and we learn from these mistakes mistakes of others mistakes of experts mistakes of amateurs and if you're lucky you'll find them when you're hauled out on the hard post voyage when everybody is safe and sound um, and hopefully uh, you do something about this before you go out in the water again tragically the last owner did not and he was well aware of it and probably the original builder and his wife as well but when money's involved and egos are involved logic and reason and common sense tend to go by the wayside and that's really why I'm doing this and why I have been doing this and to be completely honest with anybody who wastes or feels it appropriate to take their time to watch this footage that I make I do it for the benefit of others and the benefit of those who um, would otherwise be swindled into purchasing something like this or um, being misled into believing that this was a sound practice under all circumstances. What we have here is my boat that I paid a fair chunk of money for um, about five years ago back in the Philippines. Uh, that alone should say it. Yeah. But could have been great, would have been great and had the builder um, been meticulous and actually stopped and taken an honest look at what was happening with all six failed laminations two halves per hull um, this would not have happened and I would not be contending with this today but all that aside um, in continuation of doing the right thing here I swallowed my pride and um, cut open my investment here on the uh, 37 foot KHSD cylinder molded trimaran Epicurus formerly um, that was used occasionally for day charter and for ocean crossings uh, what I wanted to get here on the subject of this ramp before I go into overtime here is um, the uh, I'm going to reiterate the importance here of, a, of three absolutely necessary things aside from the solid construction practices for multi-hull safety. Watertight deck, watertight deck, watertight deck. And this is a rare um, glimpse into what happens when the decks get neglected and moisture makes its way in. These boats are full of crevices, uh, most are, and it's not the material that, that fails of the mariner. It's the construction practice and negligence, gross negligence. Rainwater is poison for anything that's made out of wood, and it, just because something is sheathed in glass and covered in epoxy, it's not me that that nick or crack or unsealed hole up on the deck will not cause problems like this. This is a void uh, filled area in the laminate. The plywood sheets had been forcefully pushed up on during uh, compounding on the, on the biaxial mold. The edge of this sheet, the entire scarfed edge was not bonded and it wrinkled 
that material has to go somewhere so it, it crushed and the half atmosphere vacuum um, that was applied to these layers was inadequate to clamp them together and the end result is what you see here so that probably um, wasn't enough and um, a two or three hundred dollar vacuum pump working in concert with that would have been would have been excellent along with a completely sealed bag again I can only speculate but I'm making a, a very reasonable um, analysis here in, in uh, light of fairness uh, this uh, this crevice this um, uh, filthy nastiness here is what happens when you have loosely fitting bulkheads that are uh, coved in in a very sloppy and haphazard manner. This is a, a water passage um, that's bringing rainwater all the way up there and from all the way forward of this roof, nursing it down here into the bilge in a very inconvenient um, area to inspect underneath the cockpit with about uh, two millimeters of head clearance um, for a baby and uh, down underneath the keel joint and underneath the floor um, so underneath the uh, underneath the frames um, so what uh, we're looking at this void here we got lots of uh, bronze nails that went through to in a vain attempt to try and suck it together but she's rotted out this is what happens when rainwater gets in it ain't the ocean that does this folks it's the rain um, this area uh, forward of this uh, of this scarf had enough uh, epoxy protecting it um, that it did not suffer from this um, we have some superficial mold growth there on the surface but moving forward you have evidence of some biological growth here coming up underneath the epoxy it's good and coming down here it's um, it's been wet I can I can tell but it hasn't gone downhill as much as this area has I'm I can say that it is exclusive to this side of the hull stops at the keel joint um, and the last owner was well aware of it of course he never mentioned this in the sale uh, but this is a patch that was put in on the on the inside uh, of an inferior grade of, of plywood and that's that's coming off this whole section has to be cut out because it's a huge whopper of a bulge but if you got a boat like this um, you haul it out, you dive it, whatever you do, you dive it, take the time, put a mask on, get down there. And if it looks anything like this, a pockmarked, bondoed face, then, uh, yeah, run as fast as you can. All right, folks, I'm going into overtime here. Uh, until next time, cheers.